and High, of course, has broadened his champion pool very much so, which is a bit unlike mm. uh, the rest of Cloud9. They've all really stuck to their tried and true champions, where it's High who's been the one jumping around to new, uh, new picks. Well, both Voy and High sit around a 2.5 KDA, so they see a bit of action in the mid lane. They're not necessarily players to play passively. Right. Shifter is one of those mid laners who will almost never die because he'll wait right at the back and th he knows he's the yeah. one who has to do the, the work for his team late in team fights. But Voy Boy and High very much trust the rest of their team to finish, if that makes sense. Mm. And they're completely willing to be the first one in if it means getting all their damage out. And we do see pretty targeted bands coming out here. Medios doing too good on the Lee Sin, says Curse. So we're going to take that away. The Sivir been seeing a lot of picks. Not too yeah. many bans lately, but now she is. It's a bit of an interesting Sivir ban. Uh, of course, Sneaky was 2-0 and on Sivir. Yeah. And Cloud9 has struggled against Sivir so far this split. I think it's, it's an interesting ban for Curse because Cloud9 would rely on that movement speed so much. When Cloud9 is at their best, it's because they can force multiple fights on the map and generally have more people in an area. Right. And Sivir is a key component for that in the mid game. So getting that out of their hands is pretty beneficial. I like Lemonade, or like Saint said, Lemonation roaming around with the team, getting things up and ready with map pressure. And then they take control of the game. Waiting for the first pick for Quas. Looks like he's actually taking uh, something, something from like the team here. Resh as well. Just- It is open, yep. Nothing huge is up. It's Elise is obviously there. They might want to deny that from Meteos and let I Will Dominate play it. But interestingly enough, I Will Dominate hasn't played it. And yeah, we forgot about that one. Yeah, Voidboy actually has not played it. So this is going to be his first time coming in onto LeBlanc. But we also have seen LeBlanc in the top lane. And Quaz is one of those that has a giant champion pool for top lane as well. Yeah. So you can't put that anywhere yet. And you can see that big 100% champion win rate for the LeBlanc. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if that 11-0 in the North American LCS streak can continue with either Voidboy or Quaz taking the helm on that. And then the two picks that we were yeah. considering Chris would take obviously go over to Cloud9 because those are high on their priority list. Easy grabs there. They don't have to yeah. worry about too much of that part of the early game. Medios is one of his highest picks is Elise, so he's happy to be yeah. on that. And now it's up for Boy Boy to pick it up for St. Vicious. St. Vicious has tried a bit on Leona. He's one and one with that. Looks like they're going to lock it in again. Yeah, those are the supports that people have been playing. Not too much to say about that one. Hard initiation on yep. both sides. The Leona really fits St. Fish's play style. Being able to go in with Vi and LeBlanc means whatever backline Cloud9 wants to pick, they're going to need a lot of elusiveness or a lot of safety. Right. Just or maybe say, just a bit of tankiness, you know? I'm gonna point out that curse, formulating a pick comp here, trying to get that kill. Kill potential up through the roof so far with the picks they have. Like you said, Cloud9 looking for safety here, but also something they can control the game with. I has quite a bit, quite a bit to choose from. I wouldn't be too surprised if they pick something like Caitlyn as their AD carry, just because they can keep so much distance with it, and maybe a big tank uh, up top for balls. Oh no! Well, they haven't picked balls pick yet. They did go for the Caitlyn. That's been since week one, yeah. since High got his hands on Diaso. I think it's been since week one since anyone has gotten their hands on Diaso. Yeah, and something that we have to point out is we are on the 4.1 patch, right. by the way. So that is before the majority of the Yasuo nerfs have hit. He is still, uh, mm -hmm. still quite strong yeah. right now. And currently the only knock-up synergy they have is with Thresh. It'll be interesting to see if yeah. they try and put a Shivana in the top lane just for a little bit of added synergy. And Boy Boy will know how to play against that. He himself has two games on Yasuo. Actually, in week four, that was played. So two weeks ago, so not too long. We see the picks coming out. I think they are kind of taking that away from yeah. our balls here. So a nice pickup on the Rumble, as well as it being good for Quas. Yeah, five Renekton picks, four balls, zero Renekton picks so far from Quas. But Renekton in the past has been one of his favorite champions to yeah. play. He is very capable of that. And yeah, of course, the Shibana on the other side, they're going to try and synergize that with the Yasuo, Yasuo knockups. And pretty pretty stand or, or solid team comps for both sides here. And no Lemon Nation for his Flash Flays. He'll be in there for high as well on Yasuo. We'll see if what they can get going for this. You see Lemon yeah. giving the last few tidbits of info before they head into the load. Yeah, there will be some very interesting team fights mm -hmm. in this game, I think, just because there's so much pick potential on the side of Curse right. with just the uh, A, the bottom lane, Leona Ezreal have the 
capability of completely bursting out someone if they just land Leona Alt and then yep. Ezreal can throw his, throw his combo. LeBlanc, just because she is LeBlanc, can do that. Uh, and then you look on the other side, very team fight oriented. If they could pull off some type of combo where Shivana gets a displacement on multiple people and then Hai can combo with the Yasuo Alt, uh, the fight would basically be over. For right there. So Curse definitely needs to look for a bit more of the smaller engagements, picking people off, playing with the Fog of War, yeah. whereas Cloud9 is trying to find those big brawly fights. All right, we'll see as the teams load under the Rift. Let's see who you think will come out on top. According to LOLesports.com, 78% of you think that Cloud9 is going to take this win, which is actually yeah. pretty low, I, I feel, yeah. for Cloud9, I mean, considering Coast, last split. And if what Coast was the 6%, TSM was 94. Yeah. Uh, it makes a little bit of sense, though. Curse has been trending for the first time since they really joined the North American LCS. So playing, look at the Yasuo pick for a second. We haven't yeah. seen him in a few weeks. Knowing that there's a Yasuo in the game, the potential for any one of your champions to pretty much be zeroed out. Mm -hmm. How do you consider the early game? How do you play into that, knowing that at any time the other team's about to explode with damage? Yeah, it'll be a very interesting laning phase, I think, because whichever person gets ahead, whether it's the Blanc or Yasuo, will have a huge amount of swing on the other lanes, and it's a very skill-intensive matchup in the mid lane. Uh. I've seen this exact matchup twice in the LCS, and it's gone completely opposite ways. It really depends on how good High is with his wind wall to block Boy Boy's burst. Another awesome thing to check out as we go into our third game of the day. We've had some amazing games so far with TSM's win streak being snapped. We'll see what Curse can do to get some wins under their belt, as well as Cloud9. Curse is 5-7 and seven on the split. Cloud9 is 9-3. and three. And Cloud9 has the head-to-head -head matchup versus Curse. So we'll see if Curse can even that up, too. Hey, and especially with Coast and Evil Geniuses winning already today, mm -hmm. this is becoming more of a must-win for Curse. Curse doesn't, isn't really considered as one of those bottom of the LCS teams, yeah. but it is a real possibility uh, if they don't start winning this game that they'd be down in those bottom two spots. We'll see what they have for each other coming in. Curse has a pretty hard week. I believe Dignitas tomorrow and Cloud9 today. So if they can get this win, it's going to be very, very helpful for them. Definitely in the mentality and the momentum department. Sneaky in mid lane. I was looking, where's Sneaky? Sneaky's in mid lane, as always. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely seeing a little bit more early action today, though. Yeah, we are. That's been there really great. There hasn't been much in the first five weeks of the North American LCS, but first game, Evil Geniuses with fantastic tactics, level one, uh, trying to sneak in a side brush, and then the delayed invade in that TSM versus Coast game. Uh, knowing that one of these teams has Thresh on their side, a delayed invade would be a possibility, but it's much harder to do that from uh, the side of the map they're on right now because the access to bottom lane is a little bit more difficult, but there they go. Right, we're going to get the action right here as they hatch that ward just above the red pit. But they do get one down. They're going to have a bit of control, at least for the vision and timing. Keep themselves safe. Looks like they're going to stay, though. Yeah, a uh, choice to not contest because they saw everyone walk in. They haven't necessarily seen them walk out, so Cloud9 mm -hmm. could pull a feint here and get back to their red, but it looks like they're just going to trade buffs. So a very Season 3-esque start with a spotted invade via a mm -hmm. ward and then just a straight-up red buff trade. This kind of plays into how Cloud9 uh, usually plays their bottom lane with not a lot of wards. This is the first time we really see a team using the wards for invade. Usually you see Curse their regular setup of wards to know where the jungler's going and how it's working. Yeah, well the interesting thing about this is Cloud9 doesn't need wards in the bottom lane because they force the enemy jungler to the opposite red. There is no way I Will Dominate could start any farther away from the bottom lane <laughs> than what they forced him into doing there. So the gank threat isn't actually real at the moment and they're safe to play with that wards. Great job by Cloud9 so far. Boy Boy, even taking damage when he tries to trade there you saw in his distortion. So he's got to be careful in that lane. Ah, he's trying to take the aggression immediately. Yasuo's level 1 and 2 are obscenely strong because the E with that uh, additive damage, 25% the more he dashes through, really, really hurts early on in the game, uh, more so than almost anyone else. Not to mention he has that shield up right now. It's around level 5 and 6, maybe to about level 9 or 10 before he gets his items going, that Void Boy would look to take advantage. Knowing that it's just a few items to get high going, I'm sure he'll be shooting for that immediately in that mid lane. Already level three over Boy Boy, and just by a minion you can see, so they're keeping it pretty even in that lane. Dominate, not slowed down too much in the jungle just yet, but we really haven't seen the result of having to go and get the top side red buff. Yeah, well, we'll see if he can pull off yep. the gank here. If High uses the dash in at the wrong time, 
Uh, he has no jungle support from Meteos at the moment. Meteos trying to support Falls a little bit up top. Yeah, gotta expect that. Renekton, he's gonna be that Grizzly Croc in the early part of the game, putting down the damage, but it looks like they are gonna put down the pressure onto him. They give the Volatile Spider a little bit of time, and actually Meteos is given some, I believe, respect to dominate because he's around, maybe? Well, they just had to be very careful ganking Renekton. He is the guy who turns around ganks on mm. junglers more so than almost any other laner. Uh, nice hook and buff. A good hook peacemaker for a trade. Yeah, just to get back to that. Yep that top lane matchup a little bit. At the moment, Balls just wants to stay even and not die before mm. he can start taking over. Uh, Meteos came up there to give him a bit of breathing room yep. and make sure he could last hit at his turret. And just because of the way the counter jungling went, oftentimes when teams do invades and have to start at each other's buffs, it does decelerate the ganking paths of these mm. guys. Uh, so he wasn't necessarily worried that I Will Dominate was ganking somewhere else. And the investment was literally just to give Balls some breathing room in CS, which he did successfully. We always talk about how Renekton pushes his opponent to the turret. So great moves by Medios, helping Balls in the top lane. We know Balls can get behind quite far in that lane and still be very useful to the team come late game. He just has that mentality to keep himself alive and running. 400 gold lead for Cloud9 here as they are keeping themselves well CS'd in the lanes. You can see High with the pressure on a Void Boy. LeBlanc's not the best last hitter at the turret. Not super early on in the game. She is uh, vulnerable to getting shoved in a little bit. Yeah. We'll see if Boy Boy goes uh, for a wave clear build fairly shortly. Whether right. he gets a huge amount of blue buffs or whether he prioritizes some mana regeneration so he can spam his distortion on the wave mm. uh, is yet to be seen. But as far as just the overall laning picture goes, it's even aside from the bottom lane with that Caitlyn and Thresh pick. Doing pretty good work for Cloud9. Uh, sneaky. He's pretty good at farming. Very good at getting the damage in as well to keep them ahead in the bottom lane. We really see Lemonation and Sneaky going behind when they're consistently ganked in lane. They usually yeah. don't lose it on their own accord. Which does happen fairly frequently, <laughs> yes. to be fair. Teams yeah. love to try and pick Sneaky and Lemonation off. Sneaky has a very interesting play style where a lot of teams don't like to give him credit, but his score near the end of the game mm -hmm. is often really strong. He will always just maximize damage in team fights, no matter what, which does mean that sometimes he'll get caught out or look like he is out of position, but oftentimes Cloud9 will win a team fight after something like that happens. So the consistency on the ward for the red buff, they got about another minute for that, but they're actually gonna try to push Boy Boy possibly off of this mid lane to make it safer. Yeah, this would be a very interesting invade by them. The timers on the red buff are completely desynced. Yeah. Because early on in the game, I will dominate left the small monsters at the red buff, whereas Meteos cleared them out. So if they wanted to invade and they were successful with it, they would potentially get both of the red buffs, which means it would be a, a higher reward invade by them because they wouldn't just trade them. However, it is very dangerous to do that at this point in the game. It dominates already on that portion of the jungle. Looks like he'll be able to get his red without the harassment of Meteos as we still watch High and Boy Boy here in the mid lane. Both share around a 2.5 KDA. That's because we said they go aggressive and they go in on the fights. High looking to get some damage done. That could have just been for the harass as mm -hmm. well, because we see Cloud9 has three wards in the jungle of Curse right now, and they're all moving for that invade. It's working across the map. Sneaky and Lemonation are winning the lane and have them pushed back. Therefore, it enables them to walk in for this invade. And this is when you know you have the control, when the opponents can visibly see you moving, and they really can't do anything about it. Yeah. It was just high getting enough damage mm -hmm. down, and bottom lane having enough control that enabled Meteos to do this. You look at the scoreboard, you say, wow, Meteo's great counter jungling, but without the lanes, yeah. both winning on their own uh, ground, that invade would not have been possible. Meteos is the man who stated, I put on Reddit and social media, that if your lanes are winning, go gank the other jungler. Give him a hard time. And right there, they're not letting Dominate get off easy. Eight minutes into this one, he is going to try to do some useful things, though, for himself. The top part of that mid is warded, so High is going to be safe, just kind of hurtfully using his yeah. time up. This is the point in the game, though, where teams would want to gank Yasuo quite mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, luckily for High, he has a ward in just the right place and a jungler on the other side, so he is protected in both ways. Also, because I Will Dominate's jungle has been invaded so heavily, he hasn't wandered into that river, which means that pink ward is up for quite some time and protecting both sides for him. This is going to be a good game for Medios as well. He gets to soak up all the blue buffs for himself. Let's see if that puts him over Dominate as they'll be giving those over to Boy Boy. Dragon's going to be theirs coming in eight and a half minutes into the game. 
A very Cloud Nine-esque game, yeah. if you will. They're just controlling everything. Really a smooth rotation there by Cloud Nine, a no risk mm -hmm. dragon. High recognized when Boy Boy peeled away for the blue buff, meaning that even if the bottom lane was there to contest, they would have no LeBlanc. Yeah. Therefore, it was a very safe dragon take, and Cloud Nine gets it uncontested. Curse not with the ultimate dragon fighting team either at this point. Not getting too much damage out of Cop or Boy Boy. We'll see if they can get it in a few more minutes. They gotta wait a little bit. Boy Boy is in the mid lane. He's doing fine. 73 to 66. Picks picking up a ring so he doesn't just get burst out of lane by the damage of high here on constant attacks. Yeah, Boy's gonna want to start roaming fairly shortly. Mm. But we talked earlier how Cloud9 is the team that wants to get the big team fights <laughs> with Shivana. Uh, and the Yasuo combo, and Boy Boy and the rest of Curse are the teams that want to roam around and get the odd number fights, use LeBlanc first. Oh. And the start of that roam is Boy Boy going down there and clearing out that pink ward. Now he's going to be more free to walk down that river if he can shove high out of lane. A great little wind wall there, saving high for some damage, and we can see now that Balls is level 8, Renekton's kind of lost that early game pressure for himself. Also building the Tiamat to keep the lane pushed against Balls doesn't really give him the armor he needs. Yeah. All power to, uh, to balls right there. Doing great to just stay completely even with Quas. Oftentimes at this point in the game, you would have seen the Renekton in between the Shivana's turrets maybe yeah, a couple yeah. times. Uh, that has just not been the case. A little bit of it has to be that Meteos has spent a fair amount of time just being near Quas, which scares him off of going aggressive. And now Balls knows what to do with it. This is Quas' first Renekton game. May not see him going full force and going for broke on some of these fights. So he's going to play it pretty consistent, like you said, along with balls. Now bottom lane, we see St. Vicious gaining a little bit of brush control here. They haven't really tried to activate too much in the bottom lane, just playing it safe. No, and unlike the first two games today, we might see a bottom lane gank. We've seen a lot of solo lane focus thus far, but Vi, if she excels at anything, it's ganking for that bottom lane. All it would take is one good St. Vicious stun, and everything would come in afterwards. There's a lot of zone control coming out from Cloud9, though, with the Thresh and the traps from Caitlyn, making this gank a difficulty. Oh, there's a hit. A very nice box to come oh. down. The Solar Flare hits Saint on his own head, and it doesn't do much. Yeah, he tried to point blank the ult because yeah. he was trying to chain his stuns together. Uh, but there was a net out right before that. Saint burns everything. Sneaky loses just a bit of health. Night nice off damage. coming from Boy Boy. Yeah, very nice damage. Boy Boy feeling confident about his lane now, and I would not get in range of a distortion QR right now from Boy Boy. Uh, needlessly large rod was a fast buy to give back the same amount of damage Whoa. that he's been receiving. That is quite deep from Dominate, who's been having yeah. a little bit of trouble this game. That was wasn't tanky enough. Way too far. A big miscommunication there. Boy Boy had used his ultimate previously, so he could not double distortion in to go support that I will dominate mm -hmm. gank. He ends up running his flash and his ultimate just for the flash of high, and takes a bunch of damage and loses control of the mid lane. Ill-advised move there by Curse. Quas trying to take an advantage when he can. Looks like Balls pushed up a little too far and has been taking damage, so he will back in the top lane. You can just say that Ignite is down in the flash for Voiboy Boy as well, just recently cut down with that last engagement. Right, now that we've seen the first turret go down, yep. uh, we're going to be entering a little bit more of a roaming phase. There's not as much safety on the map, especially for the LeBlanc roam. Uh, therefore, if we look at some of the builds of Cloud9, we can see they're going a little bit more for tankiness or just resilience right now. Meteos uh, has went directly for the tank spirit. A lot of times, Elise's will stop at a spirit stone or even just the Hunter's Machete and go for the full magic penetration. Start but, the boots, but against right? the LeBlanc, uh, that's just suicide, and Voiba would kill him. Likewise, Sunfire Cape up top, Caitlyn is mobile in her own right, and Thresh has a Dorn shield early on. So if Boy Boy wants to take someone out, he's got to go very deep, and he won't necessarily be able to take out the main threats at this point in the game, which are the two solo laners and the jungle. Well, those main threats are going to be very well off in the extended fight, and that's going to be bad for Boy Boy. Hopefully he continues to get his blue buff and keeps himself on the top of the game. Right now he's level 9. It looks like everybody's kind of averaging out around there, so... Good things for Cloud9 and Curse. No kills on the map so far. We're 13 minutes in. I think our longest first blood for today. Yeah, definitely for today. You can start keeping the timer on. Longest first blood of the year. I believe <laughs> yeah. that was somewhere in the 20 minute mark. Yep. There was actually a game in 2013 season that didn't have first blood until 25 minutes. Good but old I, don't, I don't think we're on the pace for that one. I think the next dragon fight yeah. could be a big point of contention. Which has already gone in favor of Cloud9, that first dragon. Yeah. Real and, quick. And the way Cloud9 is continually coming in to try and invade the jungle of Curse against someone as threatening as LeBlanc, 
is really just asking for battle. Curse is not going to want, not going to take too kindly to getting invaded like that. And Cloud9 is not a team to really let up on stuff like that. Either. We'll still have to see how that coordination between balls and high go with displacing somebody in the Asuo's last breath. They can get those alts in or else it's just up to high for those initiations. 14 minutes in, both teams giving each other a little bit of space here as they go for their buffs. Yeah, and this is actually a more contestable dragon for Curse as long as they realize when Cloud9 took the last one. Mm. Uh, the window for Cloud9 to take their last dragon was because Boy Boy peeled off to take the blue buff. Dragon responds every six minutes, blue buff responds every five. Right. So on this rotation of the timers, it means that they can take the blue buff and then make it for the dragon fight, just based on the timers that Cloud9 worked with last time. And this blue buff was not something Meteos goes over to aggress on. He was back in base, making sure he gets that buy of the Sork boots since he rushed the golem, and he'll be back down ready for dragon here. Boy Boy may try to get some damage onto high here, knowing the dragon's coming up. I feel those two could engage quite soon. Yeah, so Meteos has a lot of good items. Yeah. High doesn't really. Just the zeal. You definitely want the static shiv, maybe even some attack damage on Yasuo before he becomes potent in those situations. However, there is pink ward control from Cloud9, a lot of roaming coming down as well. Let's see if they can take this dragon while high distracts in mid. You get the flow down, he'll have that charge coming up from his ultimate, but it looks like it's just a one-two punch there for Curse to get into position. Cloud9's already mm -hmm. done it under their nose, though. Yeah, they had a ward over the top of it, but you could definitely tell Curse was slow on the uptake from that, which is a little surprising. Uh, considering, they obviously they didn't have an exact timer on the right, dragon, right. but it would have been a good thing to try and contest knowing Boy Boy uh, can maybe blow someone up since they haven't yeah. been able to itemize too much tankiness. A good take by Cloud9, but I think a missed opportunity for at least looking for a catch yeah, on Curse's side. At least taking that chance, yeah. trying to turn it into something. Well, with that, a little bit of a gold lead here for C9. The dragons are going to be very helpful as those two and the timer are in their favor. We'll see Sneaky now. Bloodthirster finished up, but that's going to be comparable to Cops. They're keeping it pretty, pretty even in the bottom lane, 150 yeah. to 139 there. Aside from getting pushed in for a really mm -hmm. long time, which has cost them other objectives, Cop and St. Ficious are standing pat. It's an interesting bot lane here for Curse because obviously Cop played the first half of the season with Zcan and very recently has had to lane with St. Ficious. Curse has St. Ficious on support. Yep. more for his mid-game and shot-calling action than for his actual laning skill. And I would say they definitely lost that lane, even if the CS stays fairly close. And it's to Cop's credit that he's been able to keep up that farm. Because I feel like St. Fitch has had very little to no presence in that lane. Right. Based on how they've been pushed in that entire early game. Well, St., we have to remember when he played Alistar, made an impact when the lanes were winning. Because he could yeah. roam mid lane and help. Those shot calls from him were really, really big. But right now, like you said, when he can't make them, they're forced to fall behind on their heels. They lose mid yeah. turret here at 16. And the flash down on St. Ficious means the initiation potential from Curse is yeah. greatly diminished. Curse has had some troubles this year when they fall a little bit behind in the game, finding the right thing to do. It seems like Curse's games are either absolute bloodbaths or just right. that 4 0 loss like they had earlier to CLG where they just do nothing and get all their turrets pushed in. They have to find some type of middle ground. Right now, it's looking like one of those games where Cloud9 is just out rotating and Curse's gun shy about going in for some fights because there's been a couple opportunities where they could have tried to force some action and they've decided against it therefore forfeiting some advantage right to Cloud it's 9. like they're really relying on the combination of their ultimates to have to happen they're not mm -hmm. taking any chances where they wouldn't get the full effect out of it we'll see as it is about 26,000 to 23 that's a small gold lead but it is going to start meeting core items are being finished like you said that static fish static shiv is going to be big for high but he also has to watch out that Boy, or Boy Boy has yeah. completed his death by a grasp. Yeah, and big gold totals on those top laners as well. Balls sitting on 2300 versus 1800. First action from Curse, going for balls. He's going to be quite in a bad spot. Brings the Assault and Battery back with the Dragon's Descent, but it's going to be good damage. First blood at 19, 18 minutes into the game for Curse. Yeah, but what does this cost them? They move their jungler and their mid laner up top. There's a lot of pressure on the rest of the lanes. Cloud9 is going to try and make something happen off this one. This is already a lane. They've taken down that first tier turret. High is going to go back, try to bait Cop and do a little bit of damage. Oh, the play is the activation. That's the one they got in. The box damage Ooh. just sitting on the outside and a great turret tank by Lemon Nation. 
There's that Thresh versus Yasuo Synergy trying to get a combo so High can knock him up more readily. If they get a turret and uh -oh. a kill off of this, it is their benefit. Bing Bang Whoa. Boom! That's the LeBlanc, the Magician, trying to get out. The clone goes one, High goes the other way. He's got his x specs on. He knows which one to go for. How many people are going to take on one after the other? Here comes Saint! Uh-oh! Saint going in. 2v1 situation. Nobody else is there. It's Dominate flashes for the Q, but he's just short on the end. High's trying to dip, dodge, and dash, but they got wrenches. Yeah, the reign of High's Yasuo ends there but not after they deal a bunch of damage to Curse's entire structure base. Let's take another look at this. This combo is just Lemonation getting the play Ooh. directly into High coming in. And the great thing is he was knocked up as the box was populating around him. Mm -hmm. So he got really messed up in that whole combo. Uh, and then of course Boy Boy gets in for a clean assassination. But of course it's all about Cloud9 rotating down a little bit sooner there because there was such an investment by Curse in the top lane. Cloud9 found some good pressure on the other side. And yes, finally, Curse. after Curse stands yeah. down, all the people that were actually top lane, they finish off. Sneaky high. says, see you later. You can go down in 2-0-1. That's fine for him. He's already getting to build his damage. A BF sword comes out of that little excursion in the bottom lane for high. He's going to be very scary soon. This is what I was asking Jad about before, when high is just going to explode. And we're getting to that point. 20 minutes into the game, 1 minute and 15 for the dragon. His balls Ooh. finds a little bit of aggression in the top lane after just getting back to lane from dying. Yeah, it's the roam coming in from Boibo right now, and he's actually trying to get Quas' Renekton going. Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to the bottom lane is because St. Fitch's is very much also a roamer right here and it seems like they're trying to get control of the top side of the map first and foremost. They have it. If they have top side, they have the blue buff control. They can kind of shut down Boy Boy a little bit more, but he's been getting that for himself pretty consistently here so he can keep himself in a position to just kill, kill, kill. Right now, 1-1-1. One, one, and one. He yeah. cannot be the LeBlanc he wants to be. Curse has all their ultimates up right now and five in the mid lane. There is down to Shivana ult, I believe, unless it's back up again. There's a hook. Let's see if we see a fight. They didn't have the eyes on Boy Boy. It's going to be Quaz in the top, and they want high so Whoa. bad right now. It's going to be him. Oh, going down real fast. It's 30 seconds on the clock. This fight could be extended out by Curse, but they know Dragon's up, and they're going to wait it out. Really good timer right there by Curse. It seems like Cloud9 is going to try and counter push the mid lane a little bit. The timer is not exact on the Dragon. And they have to oh deal with dear. that middle lane. Yeah, they do. Maybe after getting that kill, Curse puts themselves out of position by having a bad timer. Very good call here. Elimination throws down the shield so they can get there quicker. And it looks like with that, they are going to stay for Dragon. Good call from Curse. Kind of make the best of a bad situation yeah, right absolutely. there. absolutely. Uh, definitely should have saved some base defenders after that fight. In the engagement itself, uh, High was caught off around the side. He definitely was trying to flank on Yasuo. Uh, and that was the pick potential of Curse. They're going to be wanting to do more of that in these upcoming fights. Instead of fighting Cloud9 head on, catching the people trying to flank them gives Curse the edge. I like this too. They got Dragon, or they didn't get Dragon. They got mid lane. They know Dragon went down and they say mid's not enough. We got to get top lane now too. It's yeah. open. It's too easy for us to get. And they need to open this up now. Yeah, turret rotations by Cloud9 have been far superior mm -hmm. in this game to Curse. They have slightly better lane pushing with the Static Shiv and yeah. Shibana with the Sunfire Cape, uh, plus the Caitlyn, so the, the lane pressure has accumulated throughout the game. But even so, it being a five turret to one advantage is a bit much. It means Cloud9 has substantially outplayed them in the pushing stage. Just trying to see how much sweeping has been done over these wards. Mm. Not too many. Kai has two swept out, so they're really just keeping themselves focused on the push right now. They haven't had actually too much time to ward or sweep wards going into these fights. Four to two, Curse has more kills somehow coming into this game, but it's really because they've gotten the focus on the fights, just nothing to push after, and that's really what they need. They need to get this yeah. gold that's just sitting on the map in front of them. Well, it's kind of this return to mid lane right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Curse is in a sticky situation, because since they're down five turrets, if they stay back and sit by their turrets, yeah. Cloud9 will accumulate a lead, they will steal Curse's jungle, and they will pressure around the Baron buff. So Curse is trying to put a strong front on in the mid lane as long as they can stop split pushing and then find fights there. Because if they don't find fights, fall back. This is Curse trying to find that initiative. They do not want to sit back and get starved out by Cloud9, but it puts them in a dangerous situation. Talisman for Talisman, eye for an eye, as they go in the initiation on a fight. And you get the fog of war that Voiboy or any of Curse can use to get fight. the pick out. They go right onto high. 
Nice true shot barrage through the middle of the fight. High can't get out just yet. Dominate takes him down. Ball's trying to get to the back line. They take out Void Boys, so the high front end damage is taken out from both sides. Dominate back onto Sneaky. Can he keep peeling? Kaylin, one of his best champions, keeps himself alive. They are on to Cop, but he's got the blue buff and he stays safe. Yeah, everyone piled on to high, but at what cost yep. there? for a curse. They wanted the fight, they needed the fight, and they got completely destroyed in the fight. Looks like Cloud9 can take this Baron right afterwards. Playing it very safe, just calm, cool, yeah. and collected throughout the yeah. fight. Big problem here is when Boy Boy got blown up at the start of that. You could see Meteos and Balls finished him off. Therefore, there wasn't strong enough dive onto Sneaky. And this is what I talk about, Cloud9 peels for Sneaky so well when there was St. Vicious yeah. and Dominant on him. The entire team pushed back and saved Sneaky, then he could support from the back. That was really what secured in the fight. Boy Boy getting caught very early on, and then Sneaky being protected by the entire crew of Cloud9. Such great peel coming in, too. Not like you get a lot of crowd control from a Shivana and whatnot. You're just running next to him, doing as much damage and trying to deter the fight. But Oftentimes, that's enough. Yeah, together, they're able to make it happen. 2-0 and 3 for Sneaky. Like we said, or like I said, rather, 3-0. and zero. So far on Caitlyn, he could make it 4-0 and zero with this game as Cloud9 has a pretty good lead, 6,000 gold in their favor at 25 minutes in. The kills are quite even because we've said Curse and Cloud9, both fighting teams. They go really yeah. hard. And especially after that last fight, I wonder how much Curse is going to be able to do in this game. No. Uh, they found what was a pretty good initiation by taking down High before he could end any of his damage in that fight. And Yasuo pretty much just brings damage. So <laughs> taking him out early and then still losing the fight four for one uh, is a big demoralizing factor and tells Curse they can't fight even manned anymore. They need to have a man or two advantage. And I think Cloud Nine's a good enough team, especially with the split pushing presence that High's going to bring now, mm -hmm. that that might be impossible for them to find. It's gonna be very strong. Right now Cloud Nine's a little grouped up in the bot lane using this Baron to their advantage, they are causing Curse to f like move or all around the map. They are formulating every yeah. strategy well, that Curse could be doing right now, and it looks like they're ready to stop it. Yeah, Curse was hoping they'd get a sloppy rotation on the Cloud9, mm -hmm. but Cloud9 comes straight through the lane, uh, playing it safe, and obviously Curse just has to fall straight back to the base. Because Cloud9 is too strong yeah. right now. The Baron's too big. They're coming in with waves. They don't have anything top and mid, so this actually gives Curse Something they may be able to siege back on here if Cloud9 makes a wrong move. They have the idea. They may have the power. It's all up to Void Boy and Dominate to make a good pick here. Sneak is going to keep himself in a safe spot and already laying down traps to make it harder for Curse. Yeah, I feel like at this point, Curse would have to find a counter engage on the turret if Cloud9 dives too hard. Uh, but with that wind wall, with the Caitlyn to safely siege these turrets, I don't feel like Cloud9 is going to be over committing anytime soon. Pretty good clear out. Really just flexing their muscles at this turret. Cloud9 is a team that we know to play very, very patient, not make a mistake. They have 30 seconds on the dragon. If they don't get anything here, they're more than happy to take that. The Baron's already on them, so this gold lead is only getting bigger and bigger. They're not really wasting yeah. time right now. They're really they just boy boy down pretty well. curse out. Uh, they're just going to be hitting. Surprise Sneaky's not going more aggressive on this turret, seeing as they do have a Thresh to try and clean him out. I think they're worried because Sneaky has not atomized magic positions yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, the LeBlanc would be the one thing that could turn this fight if LeBlanc could get a full combo on a Sneaky. So it, it is holding off the push for a little yeah. while. Maybe Cloud9 should try a split push. So it makes it so scary having that ability to blow someone up. But like you said, Void Boy also respecting the fact that Cloud9 is just going to close in on that engagement. Well, they have a Baron buff for a very short time later. They might go in on this exact push. The hook to dominate, not enough of what they wanted. No. They're just trading damage to everybody that's slowly being healed up. Dragon is going to come back up and they say, all right, we'll peel off for now. Yeah, if they weren't going in on that push, they're not going in at all because mm -hmm. there's too many other objectives for them to take. I like the dragon. That kind of spells good things for Curse. It's not great, but at least they can hold off that first push, especially with the Baron. Yeah, uh, not even the best wave clear on their team either. So it right. does show uh, that they can do a fairly good hold Cop was able to finish his Trinity Force as well, which is very important. You see, he was about an item and a half back on Sneaky. Yeah, he now was. he's just one item back. It's a little bit more respectable as far as being able to stand toe to toe in a team fight. Mm. But this gold lead is just accumulating higher and higher. Uh, you add that to the fact that Cloud9's team fight, just going to say that actually, what the Twitter guy said, <laughs> their team fight is much stronger. Uh, 
And that's one of the reasons that Cloud9 has so much control right here. Well, they knew they could take that first dragon. It was easy. They had no contest coming from Curse on that. And then the second one as well. We'll see what they can keep it going. Curse has gotten themselves in the position for a few good things. The kills they have under their belt, but 7,000 gold. It kind of hurts Curse, and I said it before, back into the position where they were the ones to state, can we do this? Actually, let's not. Can we do this? Actually, we can't. And it's going to start getting quieter and quieter. One thing to note is that I will dominate his went for the Trinity Force on Vi, as mm. opposed to a full tank build. And I think that's because they see Sneaky as a priority and they really want him dead. Look for heavy focus uh, with Vi onto Sneaky if they find something. Here's the fight. It's just like Cloud9 had the Spidey sense. They knew it was coming. A beautiful dash out by High, but he's followed by Dominate. They go one for one in quick kills. Dominate's very low and so is Quas. They're that both hook. out of the fight and a great hook in from Lemonation. They try to pull clear into the damage, and it's going to be Quas gets the stop from Cop. It wouldn't have been a kill for the ace in the hole. That a was not good. Yeah, a straight two for one. Curse wanted to find it, but in that corridor, there was just a mess of tanks for Cloud9. Nobody could get through to Sneaky. Good luck fighting through that. Dominic had to flash away. Yep. Uh, and now they're desperately trying to get back to base before this Cloud9 push. And Cloud9's thought going into that seemed to clearly be, if they are in this brush, we're okay with walking yeah. into it. They knew they had the power. They knew they had the peel more likely it right, because Lemonation right. just sat there with the box. Uh, Balls just sat there with Shivana, and it went so easily well. Just take a look at this one more time. Watch just uh, the box, obviously, and the Shivana just being in. That was like a point-blank Shivana ult. He just wants to burn out the area more so than do a bunch of damage to them, and Curse had to disperse almost mm -hmm. immediately. Curse needs to fight in spread out areas where they can use their mobility advantage. If they fight clump like that, they are opting into a bad fight. Yeah, the jungle corridor is not the best place for them to set up a battleground. We have a lot of the items finished up. They have been finished for a while, but just to recheck, the Infinity Edge and Static Shiv on high. Yeah. He has been wreaking havoc. He's 3, 4, and 0. But like we said, those KDAs are lower because they're the ones diving in, being so aggressive. Has been getting focused pretty hard in these fights, that too. That, too. Yep. Put himself in some, poor, in some poor positions, but I think the rest of Cloud9 has been picking him up this game. Yeah. It's one of the things Cloud9 is actually kind of known for is anyone can have a poor laning phase, but it doesn't mean the team will have a bad game. They're right. very good about picking up the slack when someone is is slacking. And this was just another good rotation. Curse is trying to get control of Baron. Cloud9 pushing it. There's our first inhibitor turret, and it comes when Curse really is kind of scrambling to get back into their base. There were all sorts there trying to get out of the jungle. We saw Cloud9 in the bottom. Have a little trouble with that inhibitor turret, but not this time. They break open yeah. the base at 31 minutes, and it's look like pretty clean from here on out. They can dictate a Baron. They can dictate anything. Yeah, and that was actually incredibly key. Cloud9 had a Baron and could not siege down an inhibitor turret. Yeah, that's... The fact yeah. that they just outsmarted Curse to rotate for one is incredibly potent. This Baron fight may be the defining factor in the game. Dominate trying to steal. Dominate on the other side, gets boxed in. He can still make his way over the wall. There's, oh, he gets the Vault Breaker into Thresh, actually. Lemonation stops that up. The Baron's going to be alive for a long time. Now, boy, boy, Whoa. low. A lot of Curse health bars are low. And Cloud9 is going to appear from the bushes victorious. Yeah, they did stop doing the Baron. Uh, but they could definitely go back for more. Very confusing looking fight there. As now we have the scatter type of team fight. Curse still has some of the mobility here. This, if they're going to find a situation that's good for them, this would be it for Curse. They're down a man, but they have everything scattered. This is what they want. Lemonation doing a great job at not giving up. That Dominate is somewhere. Oh no. They go on to Dominate. They don't want the chance for a smite out, but how much focus are they going to put onto him? Quaz comes up with a kill on the high. They take down Boy Boy right away along with Dominate, and it's going to be Cop and Sneaky. AD carries back and forth, oh. but Balls wants to have a save, oh. and Sneaky stays alive. The double kill for Quaz on the top side. He is going to live. He's getting a little bit of regen from that pat, or from just his statistics. Just being Renekton. Being Renekton. It looks like he's going to commit suicide on this one. Croc himself in. It's going to be the kill here for Boss. He actually throws down the Ignite too, just because. He had to make sure in that one. But as we can see in that fight, it was very chaotic and Curse almost came out on top. Take a look at, uh, watch how Boy Boy can get a lot of burst down onto High once again. And then Ooh. really, if, if Cop had 50 more health, he could have easily turned this around for a double kill. Obviously, Quas was being a monster up top here, but it was really this duel down at the bottom between Balls and Sneaky. We missed it on that on that fight, but it was very close between Ezreal. 
Second Baron of the game going down to cloud nine. Very nice job. 33 minutes in. Whee! That's not nice. Saves him. Oh, well. Saints seconds. gonna be good. You just need a beach chair, the umbrella, and a brush. You're good to go. Three, three backing tips. 14 seconds on the dragon, which is worth quite a bit of gold now. It's reached that maximum level for people to be getting some good cash money out of it. Yeah, second Baron of the game, very important. Yeah. Uh, especially because they've broken open the door to Curse's base. And like we said, as long as Cloud9 stays together, they're in complete control. It feels like it's been a much longer game than 34 minutes. Yeah. He's trying to hook something. He was. They're having fun. They Imagine. know they're quite in the lead, enjoying themselves, and you got to remember to have fun. I'm sure Curtis is trying to keep that in mind right now. It's been a tough game, and that's where you're going to get out of Cloud9, especially when all those lanes are won. We saw Meteos heavily in the jungle in the early part of the game because of the lane winning of Cloud9. Counter jungling was very big towards the red buff. Dominate was forced to go over and steal Cloud9's red buff as they did the same in the early part. That's something else we, we've been mentioning. Is yeah. The early game uh, invasions are definitely coming back and they're affecting the game from, from the first second. I mean, it's the early game. And it's something that Cloud9 has worked a lot on yeah. in the off season. Back in the 2013 season, they did a lot of just, okay, let's get out of the early game. And then they know they'll be better because they just picked really strong right. team fight, really powerful champions. This season, they're doing a little bit more about trying to take early control, force early fights, and really be less of a victim to what the other team wants to do really on in the game mm -hmm. and really write more of the story themselves. Uh, it's been very effective for them in some games. There's a bit of growing pains, but now they're the ones trying to take it down the mid yep. lane. Owl Dominate's not there. Dominate using that Triforce a little bit to take down structures as well in the top lane. Balls is going to go back, I believe, to help him out. Oh dear. See, no ball stays into the fight, actually. It looks like we're going to have St. Vicious going down on the turret. That's a big amount of damage coming in. Boy, boy, cop and St. Vicious have all fallen to a double kill in the fight, though. And it looks like they're going to be easily able to swap out a few more. Quas is the only one that stays alive onto this fight. Yeah. That could very well be the game, Rip, because Curse was not back to defend their double Nexus turrets, thinking Cloud9 would yeah. be slow to the punch. But Cloud9 is never hesitant. Slow to the punch indeed. It looks like they want another kill, but it's going to be only Nexus turrets. A 36-minute game here for Cloud9 as they finally take down Quas on Renekton. The Nexus is going to fall, and that's going to be a 10 and 3 Cloud9. Yeah, 10 and 3 on the season. 7 0 and 8 score for Sneaky's Caitlyn that game. A solid performance from start to finish. We talked about how difficult it is to prepare for curse sometimes. Picks and bans. There weren't any big surprises from Chris. No. Surprisingly, the LeBlanc, the first time the LeBlanc has lost in the North American LCS. High went toe to toe with that on Yasuo, and the rest of Cloud9 was just supporting him from start to finish. 18 kills to 9, solid victory. Kind of the story of the day. We had a Ziggs versus Zed and a LeBlanc versus the Yasuo. All those killer and wave clearers just bring the AD yeah. to the table, and they're able to shut them down so far, or so far, what we've seen. And a boy boy, like you said, his first game on LeBlanc. He was focused a little bit. They made sure to give him quite a bit of trouble to make sure that LeBlanc was not a problem. Yeah, it was close at times. 